All right, so next we're going to have uh, Nick Cannon. He's a research professor. Um, you're a full professor. Yes. Yeah. Okay, research full professor. He's going to talk about retinal neuron degeneration after optic nerve injury. Like loose of the ganglion cell, the loose of the dendrites is a condition. 
for the southbound? Or is the, is, is, is the earlier stage of the southwest? So, um, and then, but when some cell they lose their dangerous completely, they can stay, keep alive for several days in this condition. So what actually keep them die, not die without dangerous or, or can we actually promote them to regrow dangerous? And then what that save them from the time? So it's a question we're trying to study that. So that's one example. So another example is this. This is actually an often earth crash uh, in the life uh, and also we, we, we identify these cells and then we go to the back of the eye and use the forceps just mechanically crash the optic nerve on the live animal and then we watch the cells see how far they can die, how they can die. What you can see is like a 31 hours after nerve crash that same ganglia cell lose all the bandwidth and then four days later that cell is gone. Okay. So again, so in, in addition to the booming toxicity, mechanical injury of the nerve, even you injure the axon of the ganglion cells, the cells don't lose their axon. Actually, they lose the dendrites first before they die. Okay. And the third example is this. This is even much longer. This is the light-induced cell damage. So we look at a bunch of cells. We use a relatively high-intensity uh, laser to, to just uh, scan on this particular cell, and then we wait like, for 13 days. And those cells start to actually lose their dendrites, the dendrites become segmented. And then 14 days later, well, one day after this, they lose their dendrites, and another two days after that, the cell is dead. So it doesn't matter what kind of injury you use. When you injure ganglion cells, they lose dendrites first, and then they, they die. Okay. So, so then, we, as I said before, so if we look at mouse and even human or rabbits, all those uh, mammalians, there are multiple types of ganglion cells morphologically and, and physiologically. Okay. And those cells are actually respond. So the first thing we want to know, we know the cell response to disease. Can be some very different because cell, some cells die sooner than others. And then we want to know, okay, so what are the control markers for, this, for the volume we can do? So that's one, uh, that's one goal we want to look at. That. So uh, uh, to characterize again, there's a subtype specific volume. That's one goal. The second goal we want to look at that is, uh, when we lose ganglion cells in the retina, and the way, how, it's not going to affect other cells, even they are not directly injured. Is there any secondary cell death after the ganglion cell injury? Okay. And then, because that's very important, because if we want to say, do the stem cell transplantation to restore the, the vision, and if you don't have the normal cell morphology or, or, or well being of other cells, even your, your ganglion cells in your retina, they're not going to function normally, because the whole retina has to function as a network. Not individual cells, because the nerve system all function in their own. So that's the second thing. So the second and purpose, the third purpose we're doing here is we have some candidates that have a neuroprotective uh, capability. So we want to try those neuro, those chemicals with neuroprotective pr protective capability while they actually protect the cells from that. Use you know, the model we're using. And the fourth, uh, uh, well, actually, I reverse that. But the fourth purpose we're doing is we're trying to figure out if there's any genetic. Approach, we can actually protect the cell by overexpressing or downregulating the gene expression to change the cell volatility or, or promote the surviving competencies. So, animal model we're using is, as I said before, we use two uh, common models. One is the optic nerve injury by crash optic nerve, and the second is by injected movement into the eye to cause the movement inside the toxicity. And then we use transgenic ganglion cells, which express fluorescent in this ganglion cell, so we can actually very precisely uh, uh, monitor the structure change of individual ganglion cells. So, uh, so we, oops. okay. So we, we choose three uh, ganglion cell model and another animal uh, mouse model with the ampere cell specifically express GFP. So we basically have four animal models, which this is the alpha ganglion cell, we use one model specifically labeled alpha type of cells, and, the, and the, the, those two other ganglion cells we call either BD ganglion cell and GFP cell, and then there's a uh, uh, amperin cell we call the starboard cell ganglion cell. So we just pick up four type of cells here to test their vulnerability and their response to disease or, or the pathological insult. So, and then the, the, the technique we're using is just Look at the cell numbers and then look at the cell morphology. And this is an example of our three-dimensional tracing of a single ganglion cell dendrites. So by looking at by 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 looking at right now, we can actually precisely identify every small uh, uh, branches of dendrites and look at under disease condition how this changes, or if we change the gene expression, how they're changing morphology. Right. 
So, so this is the results. First results were looking at the, just look at the vulnerability of three type of subtype of gamma cells. And look at if we take the retina out, we, we just put it in gloomage on the retina and, and watch individual cells how fast they're going to lose their gamma rates. Right? What we found is from those three, gamma, three subtype of gamma cells, what the two type subtype of them are actually lose their dendrites very quickly, but another type, which is a, a BD cell, they actually dendrites can last for much longer than other two types of cells. So prove that on the common cause of cell deaths with glutamate toxicity, and the, the ganglion cell, the three type of ganglion cells are very different volume. Okay, and this is the one point I'm going to touch that later, is if we mutate the gene, in intrinsically expressed gene, the ganglion cell, that changes that cell volume from there to here, like other cells. So there's some gene actually control the cell vulnerability, all right? But I will get back to that. So the second model we're using is to do optical nerve crash and then look at how cells die and how it's going to the young cells and, uh, uh, and the embryo cells. So this is the way we do the surgery. We just anesthetize the mouse and then cut the skin a little bit and then approach to the optical nerve from the back of the line and then put a needle four steps behind that, just crush it for 10 seconds. And then, then when, when we put a dye into the ganglion cells and then look at how the dye is being transported along the optical nerve, they can say from the crash side, the dye cannot pass that, which confirms the optical nerve is completely crashed at the, uh, at the surgery site. So we now, the axon are very uh, uh, back in that way. Now, then we look at that. So we use the nutrient dye to label the, all the cells the cell nucleus in the ganglion cell layer, and then count the number of those cells. So the, the dye called the dye. So this is this is the what, what, uh, this is the retina on, on the engine retina, and this is the retina after the optical nerve crash. You can see the blue dots are much smaller. The fewer than this is because their cell died. So the, you know, uh, the number of cells is reduced. Now, so so when we look at the time course of cell death, you can say you know, before the crash and the after crash, about seven days crash, we can lose like about eight percent of cells. You can crash hard in that. So, uh, so that model is very reliable. We know what we're doing. We know how cells die, how how far they die, and then uh, we have a very reliable way to do that. So, now uh, for gamma cells, so that's what we know. And then we start looking at another model. Is looking at embryo cells. So one of the embryo cells is just inner neuron of actual synapse with ganglion cells and the bifurcus in the retina is very important for the ganglion cells to have their normal function. All right. So, so the, the embryo cell we're looking here is a transgenic embryo cell. It expresses the green fluorescent protein in those particular cell type. And then if we use the antibody to against the, the label that cell, that cell releases a super clone. So we call it a, 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 a cholinergic embryo cell. Okay. If we use the anti uh, uh, antibody label that we found, uh, uh, it kind of this is easier to say those those uh, green cells are all red. The red uh, the red uh, label is the uh, anti acetylcholine antibody, and the green is the GFB right cell. What that means is that not all the uh, uh, we call cyber cells express the GF, uh, YFP, but uh, all the uh, YFP particles are uh, the stubborn embryo cells. Okay. So we know what cells we are looking at. Then we look, we look at the dendritic structure of the cells. Okay. So after eye injury, after uh, ganglion cell injury, what we found here is uh, we, we, we get a much lighter crash on the cells. So uh, 10 days later, we only lose about 20 to 30 percent of ganglion cells. And then we so 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 in that in that in this sense we don't lose a lot of ganglion cells. And we're trying to say okay, with only 30 percent of the ganglion cell deaths, while the embryos are being infected immediately. What we found here is actually just like seven, seven days after crash, even there's no direct injury on embryo cells, the embryos still die after ganglion cells. Oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, ganglion cells did, uh, uh, didn't die, but embryos start to lose their dendritic structure. They, they lose their dendrites by. 30% in seven days after the ganglion cell died. So, so even the cell don't die like this. The cell don't die, the embryo don't die, but they lose their structure, the living structure very quickly in that way. So, uh, so, so that's uh, the conclusion about that. Then, then we start to look at it as a, uh, when we have those ganglion cell deaths by a glutamate toxicity, can we protect them from, not, from those injuries? So what we tried is, 
and the growth factor and ag uh, agonist. So we injected those drugs or chemical into the eye and then uh, either crash the object nerve or, in, or co inject those glumate into the eye to cause the toxicity. And then come the cell numbers if they call in a still cause the cell death. What we found here is the drug we gave in uh, cannot completely protect the cell from dying. But they can those drugs can protect it for the glumate toxicity induced death by uh, reducing it by 24%. So we go from here at new effect. So, uh, but when we look at uh, the optical nerve crash, and that same drug has no effect at all. So, which means even you know those cells die, looks like they in the same way they die, but when you put it on the neuron protective drug here, and the drug can protect itself from some causes, but not other causes. Right. So, so this is the same slide as I pointed uh, to you before. So we're trying to look at if there's any genetic way. Uh, we can actually find out uh, that, that the, the molecules expressed by cell per se control the cell death. If we manipulate the activity of the gene expression, can we protect cells? So the first thing uh, to do is to find is there any gene actually can control the cell death, which I, we, mean we found one gene for that particular cell. So this is before the knockout the, of the gene expression, and the cell is very resistant to glutamine toxicity. But when you look at the lockout, which is the, the triangle red, which is here. So when we lock out the gene expression in that particular cell, and then we put the glumin on, on, on the retina, we see that cell is no longer resistant to the glumin toxicity. So, so we're working on the process. Of, so we, this is actually, when we lock out the gene expression, which means we inactivate the gene activity in the cell. So the next step will be if we all activate the gene expression in the cell, can we protect the cell? And we're working on that with the results yet. So, this is the conclusion. So, ganglion cell lose the NVS before cell death with all kinds of various uh, pathological uh, insult in so far we have uh, tested. And the cell type specific transgenic mouse model is provide a very powerful tool for us to actually look at single cell structure and not then and, 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 uh, uh, in vivo time course of cell death. And uh, uh, some of those uh, neural protection uh, agents which can protect the cell, prevent the cell from death for some uh, uh, causes and other causes. So the cell response to the same agent or chemical seems very well depends on what, what's the cost to cause the cell death. And then now uh, seems like we, we seem to like find a gene which could potentially help us protect cell in the future if we can activate them before or during the cell. So this work is uh, most of the work is by a, a MD PhD student Xavier, and uh, then a visitor scanner uh, Hong Yu, and then there are two other people which are not in the picture. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you. Before you ask question, I have to say these are supported by multiple agents for the for this. Questions. Are other cell types affected when ganglion cells die besides endocrine cells? Well, which we don't know actually at this time. So, uh, which is a very good which is question we really want to know. Because people know that the photo is turbid now. I guess you heard of Brian Jones yeah, talk yeah. You know, yeah. earlier in the day. If you get a pre snap that was a photo for a die, you completely miss out the whole retinal circuitry uh, as long as you can with money now. Yeah. But very few people can look at that. Uh, if the uh, you know, post circuit dies, like a diagnosis of die, how much impact is on the <coughs> circuit? And there's not very much uh, study on that. So, so we guys that probably have to start from the very beginning to figure out how, 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 how significant the impact is. 